success doesn't mean change in reality it is change in mentality before reality hello guys this is vikram singh sanger presuming mbbs from jrmc gwalior now presenting a beautiful lecture on the great topic that is the peptic ulcers diagnosis so let's get started so guys i have posted my notes on my instagram account by the name of integrated medicals and uh, just follow that account and uh, subscribe to my channel as well so we're just starting today's lecture that is the diagnosis right and we have discussed the preclinical and the disease portion in my previous video in my upcoming video we will discuss the treatment part of that this will be our treatment part and today we will discuss the diagnosis right so first one is the diagnosis of peptic ulcers right first we are just having the invasive procedure another we are just having the non invasive procedure the invasive procedure will be just starting with the upper gi endoscopy followed by the biopsy basically the anterior portion that we are just taking into the biopsy is the anterior portion of stomach right so this is the endoscopy guided biopsy the anterior biopsy okay that that is the invasive procedure we are just having three things in that number one is histology basically histopathology portion second one is the microbiology the diagnosis the culture the culture of the uh, the bacteria and the biochemical test are done here and the, the serology as well and followed by the rapid urease test or biopsy urease test in the non invasive procedure we are just having three things number one is a breath urea test second one is a fecal antigen test and and third one is the serological portion and we will discuss the morphology first before doing biopsy we will go for the proper visualization of the stomach from inside as a gross morphology of that so the site at which the ulcers are predominant that will be the portion of the stomach between the body and the antrum on the lesser curvature the portion lesser curvature okay at which place between the body and the antrum second one is the duodenal gap the anterior wall the posterior wall of that so duodenal gap at the anterior or the posterior wall of that okay third position may be the gastroesophageal sphincter okay gastroesophageal sphincter that is what the site size if the size of that ulcer is higher the malignant tendency of this ulcer will be increased so if the size is smaller then that will be more commonly benign if the size is larger more common tendency to be a malignant growth done number more commonly that is solitary okay followed by is its followed by its shape and the shape will be the punched out ulceration the punched out ulcer okay so once we are just done with the basic morphology we will discuss the nature of that ulcer it may be benign it may be malignant and with the following characters such as margin depth base we can define it as the malignant or the benign okay if you just having these two things number one is the margin of that okay so margin should appear like a spoke wheel just okay so that is just appearing like a spoke wheel isn't it okay so what is that that is ulcer and what is these guys these guys are the rugae okay just communicating with the ulcers so in the malignant one we are just having the ulceration okay and in at the base of that we are just having the necrosis and the hemorrhage okay and which is surrounded by the induration basically that is the growth of the ulcer in the vicinity of that these are the rugae and which are not adjoining with the ulcers because of the presence of induration in between okay so that is the induration because of the presence of this induration these rugae are not supposed to adjoin with the ulcer that's why the spoke wheel appearance is not present the heaved margins are present the margins are heaved ikatta ho gaye hain okay so margins so margins are heaved here okay so rugae are the less prominent and the central area the, that is what the central area is okay the base base is necrotic and the hemorrhagic okay and the margins are irregular and inverted okay in the benign one 
we are just having the clear and a clean base number one followed by its margin are shallow and not indurated and at the level of its periphery and in the malignant ulcers we are just having the outgrowth and the elevation of this induration above the plane of the mucosa okay so that is what our appearance depth shallow deeper base in the malignant ulcers that is the hemorrhagic and necrotic that is what the gross findings that we see and observe at the upper gi endoscopy but if we are just going for the abdominal x-rays and the contrast x-rays we will find the radiological signs the hamptons line in the benign ulcers and the common meniscus sign and the kirkland complex in the case of malignant ulcers so we will go for the histopathology of peptic ulcers we will take a biopsy fix it stain it and observe it so for this sake of staining we are just having two more commonly done stains number one is hematoxylin and eosin stain second one is the warden starry silver stain okay and uh, just stain it and observe it under microscopy we will find the zoning the zones are formed okay they and we just call it as eskenazi zones first zone is the superficial necrotic and uh, second one is the exudative zone in which neutrophils are predominant and followed by the granulation tissue in which the mononuclear cells are predominant followed by zone of secretization just observe it here okay that is the first zone just so that is the first zone second one third and the fourth zone in the first zone that is zone of necrosis okay the whatever material is present is necrotized okay so zone of necrosis the superficial zone of necrosis it is followed by the pus and and the zone two the pus is present and in that pus we are just having neutrophils as a main cell component okay so these are neutrophils 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 and that is a pus here okay in the second portion of that second zone in the third upcoming zone we are just having granulation tissue the main things present in the granulation tissue and that will be the one is the regenerating vessels so these are the regenerative vessels apart from that we are just having mononuclear cell infiltration these are the mononuclear cell infiltration and along with which we are just having the fibroblast like cells so these cells are just the fibroblast like cells okay so what is that that is a third portion in which the granulation tissue along with the mononuclear cell infiltration is present followed by the zone of secretization which is the actual presence of the fibrous tissue underlying okay so that is the pathological portion what is that that hole is a pathological portion okay so we will discuss the normal areas of stomach what is that that is the mucosa okay and that is the submucosa in which the blood vessels are most important things okay followed by the muscularis propria or muscularis externa in which we are just having inner circular layers followed by the outer longitudinal muscle layer and followed by the serosa is present here okay the single layer of mesothelial cells okay in the mucosa we are just having gastric glands okay these are the gastric glands and that is the epithelium which is brush border columnar epithelium so that is the area of pathology and that is the area of physiology done followed by the another portion that is the biopsy urease test or rapid urease test in which we are just making a broth okay and a broth contains the urea along with which we are just having a ph indicator that is so this is what the broth is let's suppose i am just a diseased person okay and I suffer by h pylori infection so i will be having h pylori so that i will be having urease enzyme in my stomach okay when a clinician will take a biopsy of my stomach and just put the contents of biopsy in this broth what will happen guys what will happen the urease enzyme that is urease enzyme present in my stomach and that will cleave this urea into ammonia and as we all know the ammonia is a basic 
component, a basic substance, right? And we are just using a pH indicator that is phenol red. Okay. And the property of this indicator is when that is uh, reacting with the basic nature that will produce a pink color of the media. So the media will turn pink. Okay. If the media is just turning, the whole broth is turning pink, it means I am suffered by the H pylori infection. So followed by the microbiological lab diagnosis of the H pylori if it is present. So <clears throat> let's see. The first one is the gram staining. Okay. So we will just stain it. What we are just having in the biopsy. Okay. So we just stain it. Okay. By the gram staining. With the gram staining. Okay. And uh, if we are just observing at the H pylori, we will find it is just having a seagull structure followed by the innumerous flagella at the polar end of that. Okay. So flagellated gram negative curved seagull shaped bacilli is present in the gram staining. Right. Followed by we just going for the culturing. The two important media are sclerodermia and the chocolate agar. Okay, and uh, as we all know that the property of this H pylori is that that grows well at the 37 degrees Celsius and that is a micro aerophilic. So in even in the lesser concentration of oxygen that is able to grow. So that is micro aerophilic and incubated. And, so that is the micro aerophilic and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius. Okay, and if we just having colonies, if it is resistant, we will go for the antibiotic susceptibility testing. So we're just going for the biochemical test. Number one test is the catalase test followed by the oxidase and the urease tests. Okay, so all these three tests are positive in the case of H pylori. So that is what the basic microbiological section of this H pylori followed by. So up to which we have discussed about the invasive procedures. Now we will discuss the non-invasive procedures out to which first is the breath urea test. The most important principle of this test is like we use C13. C13 normal atomic mass of the carbon is 12. But for this test, we are just using C13, which can even be picked up by the mass spectrometer. That is a breath analyzer. Okay. So we are, what we are just using is the C13 carbon non-radioactive substance. Okay. So what we are just doing is that we are giving a solution to the patient okay filled with this urea having c13 okay if this patient is suffered by h pylori that means its stomach will have urease enzyme isn't it if he drinks he or she drinks that c13 urea that will be converted into the ammonia and the co2 right by the presence of urease enzyme okay so urease enzyme that converts and that breaks these bonds and this oxygen goes along with the carbon resulting in the formation of co2 and these molecules that will result in the formation of ammonia gas okay so this is uh, liberated and that is liberated and this one is picked up by the breath analyzer Okay, we are just blowing air to the breath analyzer and the breath analyzer will detect whether the C13 of CO2 is present or not. If it is present, that will give the signals. That means test is, uh, and, and which will mean the test is positive. Followed by the, uh, followed by the serological portion. Okay, and the modality that we are just using in this test is the ELISA. Okay, the principle is that we should detect the IgG antibody in the blood against the H pylori. If it is present, then it may be the chances that uh, the H pylori antigen is present in the body and the patient may be suffered by the H pylori, right? So we are just detecting the IgG antibody. So what is the significance of the serology? We are just doing this screening before the endoscopy. Okay, so before we are just doing for uh, and going for the endoscopy, we will just do it. Okay, we just do it at the initial time. If a patient is suffered by the H pylori, 
his or her stool will be having the H pylori antigen which can even be picked up by the ELISA and the rapid tests. Okay, that is a mode of screening done for the children. In the case of adults, the acceptability uh, is lesser since they need to provide their own stool to the lab and uh, for screening purpose that's why its acceptability to the adults are lesser but in the case of uh, in the case of children that is a mode of screening okay followed by the radiological portion of that okay so in the case of as we have discussed earlier the benign and the malignant ulcers and in the case of benign ulcers we have seen this picture in which that is a ulcer and uh, surrounding to this ulcer we are just having the mucosal lining mucosal rugae in the radiating fashion and uh, just providing a spoke wheel appearance in the case of the malignant ulcer what is present here is that the that is a massive ulcer present in the middle and which is surrounded by the induration that is induration and because of the presence of induration around the ulcers the mucosal lining the rugae are present far to it okay so that is uh, the hipped up margin uh, due to induration okay so corresponding to this we are just showing this whole picture into a abdominal radiograph first we are just doing is that we take a barium meal a contrast media is being ingested by the patient then after we will take the abdominal x-ray okay and uh, just in the abdominal x-ray radiograph in the case of benign ulcer we see that there is the that is the ulcer and that is the outpouching of ulcer okay and that is the rugae so that is the ulcer that is the ulcer that will be the rugae they are the rugae okay so rugae are the present at the collar position of the ulcer that's why it is also called as the ulcer collar and the hamptons line okay that is a basic thing associated with the benign ulcers followed by the malignant ulcers okay so we are just having a sign that is called this the carmel meniscus sign and the kirkland complex okay so that is the ulcer that is the ulcer crater that is the ulcer and in which central portion is just a uh, central portion is depressed okay in the form of a crater so that is the ulcer crater okay that is the induration that is the induration that is overgrowth okay and the central in the central portion which is a depressed will take the contrast that will appear white and and what is that that is the induration the induration this portion and this whole portion okay is depicted here and that will not take contrast so that will appear to be black or lucent okay and in the form of a shadow followed by that is a lumen 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 whole so what we just having is a black shadow here which is present adjacent to this large black shadow okay this large black shadow is the common meniscus sign and this small black shadow that is a kirkland complex right so that is what is a picture a radiograph of malignant ulcers right and which is actually corresponding to this and that is corresponding to this okay and followed by the other radiological signs if it is you know if the structure if the stricture is formed in the stomach that will appear to be our glass okay and our glass stomach will be there if the stricture develops the stricture develops in the duodenum and the first portion of that d1 and that will look like a trifoliate leaf so trifoliate leaf sign is present if <clears throat> if there is ulceration of duodenum and that will appear as the pneumoperitoneum because of the leakage of gas from the lumen of the duodenum to the abdominal cavity and that will appear as a gas present in the abdominal cavity and which is called as pneumoperitoneum and there are different signs are there such as a regular sign the air under diaphragm sign right and the cupola sign and uh, you know different ligaments are more visible that's why the umbilical sign okay and the falciform ligament sign uh, i mean um, like a ligament sign of course and these are the basic radiological signs associated with the pneumoperitoneum and that's what is the other radiological findings and 
thank you for watching if you're just having any query and doubt you can go for the comment section below hit the like button for the sake of my motivation don't forget to subscribe pressing the like will give me some life we will meet at the third portion that is the treatment part till then keep integrating thank you